Roma Wines bring you Ann Baxter in a remarkable tale of... Suspense! Reception. Yes, she is, Miss Thornton. Very well, Miss Thornton. I'll have her come in. Miss Brand. Yes? Miss Thornton will see you now. Large corner office at the end of the hall. Thank you. Jean Thornton was a tall, square-shouldered blonde with high cheekbones and a good figure. And nervous as a cat. More than that. I hadn't been in her office five minutes before I knew that she was afraid of something. Her boss, the responsibilities of her job, something. I couldn't understand it. She was art director of William J. Farrell and Company, one of the best advertising agencies in town. She had everything I wanted, professionally and a couple of other ways. And yet she was afraid. I couldn't understand it. Then? Yes, yes, these are quite good. Quite good, Miss... Uh... Brandt. Helen Brandt. Uh, yes, Miss Brandt. Quite good. But, um, cigarette. Thanks. Oh, how cute. <laughs> Silly thing. Mr. Farrell sent it to me from Mexico. Where else in the world would anybody have the patience to sit down and put together a musical cigarette case? But, as I was saying... Uh, what was I saying? Oh, oh, yes. Oh, uh, yes. These are really very good layouts, Miss uh, Brandt. I like them. But I don't quite see how we can use you just now. You said that before, Miss Thornton. Yes, so I did. Well, look, Miss Thornton, I don't need the job. I'm not one of those desperate people that's come in to cry on your shoulder. I have a job at Maxfield and Ellis. But they're stupid there. I'm not getting any place. In a firm like this where people have imagination, you have a chance. That's all I want, a chance. So do a lot of other people, Miss Brand. Well, I'm not a lot of other people. I think I've got ability, and you know it. Commercial ability. I think I could be professional. Yes, yes. Well, if there's an opening, you'll get in touch with you. You'll get in touch. I know what that means. I've been given the brush off by X. That will be all, Miss Brand. But I'm sick of being brushed off. I've got ability. As much as you have, and maybe more, and I'll show Ms. you. Miss Brent, will you leave my office, or shall I have you thrown out? All right, Miss Thornton. Good day. Of course, that would be the last time I'd ever lay eyes on Jean Thornton. That's what I thought. I went back to my office and worked most of the night, catching up on my own stuff, doing a little extra that I was peddling around town. I was standing on the sidewalk, kidding with a night elevator man, while I waited for a cab, and looking up at the tower against the early morning sky... That dark tower, 36 floors above the street, and three blocks up the avenue where the William J. Farrell Agency had their offices, and where I'd have given my right arm to be working. <laughs> You'll miss all your beauty sleep working this late, <laughs> Miss Brand. Now, Charlie, who says I need beauty sleep? Oh, you don't. <laughs> I like to work at night. It's quiet. Think of all the sunrises I see. Look at that sky. Yeah, it's going to be a nice day, I guess. <laughs> Look! I saw the body falling and the scream came to us at the same moment. We stood there frozen. Horrified. Fascinated. Oh, Lord. I wish I hadn't seen that. Charlie, that was someone from the Farrell agent. Whoever it was, poor devil. A woman. Oh, wait, Miss Brand. I wouldn't go up there. Miss Brand. Even by the time I got there, a patrol car had appeared out of nowhere. The way they will in this town... And the usual crowd of early birds and night owls standing around gawking. They were trying to cover it up with a blanket. All right, stand back. Stand back. Oh, who is it? Oh, you couldn't tell anyway. Uh, a woman. I wanted to look for it. I couldn't. A cop was picking up stuff that had rolled out of a handbag into the street, going through it methodically, opening things up. And then I heard it, and I didn't have to look. I knew. You wouldn't try to kid the press, would you, sister? You might as well tell us, because we'll just sit here anyway until... Hey, yeah, there he is now. Mr. Farrell, Mr. Farrell, I'm from the news. I'd like to know if... Please, I can't tell you anything now. Mr. Farrell, I'm Helen Brandt. Mr. Farrell, my people would like to know if Miss Thornton... Get out of that door now, please. Please, get out of here. Oh, you get out. I told you I can't talk to any reporters. Now, give me a... I'm not a reporter, Mr. Farrell. I'm Helen Brandt. I'm art director of a small advertising agency, but I've got some samples here. Mr. Farrell, please, just look at these. You're going to have to have a new art director. What did you say? Sure. You're shocked. But it can't hurt her. And I've been trying to see you for months, and now you're on a spot, and if you just Take look... Take those things out of my face and get out of just here. Just look at them first. That's all I ask. All I ask is that you... Well. And, uh, this one, for Parker's shoes. I've followed Miss Thornton's general ideas, but I've added... Well, that. Mm-hmm. They're good, Mr. Val. 
And if you say they aren't... All right. All right, they're good. They're very good. But if you think I'd hire a woman who hasn't any more decency than to barge in here at a time like this decency. and try to push... What's decency got to do with it? Do you need an art director or a Sunday school teacher? Now, look, Mr. Farrell, now, if you don't mind, my people wants to know what Miss Thornton was doing in her office at 5 o'clock this morning. She must have been working all night on the new Parker layouts. They have to be out by... They have to be out by 3 this afternoon. Working all night. Maybe went to the window for fresh air, tired, got dizzy. And... <sighs> look, Miss... Um... Brent. Helen Brandt. Uh, Miss Brandt. Miss Brandt, I think you're one of the most despicable women I've ever had the misfortune to meet. But I've got a very big job to get out this afternoon. My assistant art director's home sick, and by the time I interview Thanks. these... You can arrange the details with my secretary in there. And frankly, the less I have to do with you myself, the better I'll like it. I think you'll change your mind about that, Mr. Farrell. Now, Mr. Farrell, all right, my... We know things are tough, and you don't want to tell us, Yes? Are you, uh... Mr. Farrell's secretary, yes. Oh, well, I'm Helen Brandt. Marie Harris, how do you do? How do you do? I'm taking Miss Thornton's place. Taking Miss Thornton's place, I see. Yes, temporarily. Well, you're not one to let the grass grow under your feet, are you, my dear? Mr. Farrell said I could arrange the details with you. To be sure. I expect you'd better make out one of our regular employment forms. Oh, thank you. Temporarily, you said. Yes. Still, doesn't it feel a bit odd to be filling a dead woman's shoes that are hardly cold, so to speak? I don't see anything so odd about it, Miss Harris. Somebody would have to. No, of course you wouldn't. Uh, by previous experience, does it mean just in the advertising business? Any experience that might be applicable. It has occurred to you, I suppose, Miss Brandt, that when someone like Miss Thornton is cut off in mid-career, so to speak, there's usually a reason for it. They say it was an accident. An accident, do they? Oh, will this be all right, Miss Harris? Yes, yes, that will do. Of course, there's always the possibility of suicide. I suppose you thought of that. I suppose it might have been. Will you show me my office, please? Certainly, this way. Might as well have the dead woman's, that is, Miss Thornton's office. And, and of course, there is another possibility, isn't there? What other possibility? The possibility of murder. Murder? Why, yes. Here's your office, Miss Brad. If you need anything, just call me. I want to make you as comfortable as possible under the circumstances. Mm-hmm. 